All right, we're live. Here we are. G'day. Welcome, we're welcome. Here. What's up? G'day, g'day, g'day. Hello, Kurt, down under. Kurt wins the uh, MVP award already for showing up at 1.30 in the morning. Oh, he's in God's Just country. One, That's why. 1 a.m. No, 1 a.m. No, he hasn't got to 1.30 yet. Oh, phew. That's Queen solid, Land, mate. Dudes. Big shout out from down under. Oh, yeah. yeah. Right. yeah. Tell us where I'm you jealous. are. jealous. Just on the Gold Coast at uh, the beautiful Talabudra Valley, the parentals place. Yeah, Is that why you're whispering? Are you keeping it quiet today? Well, I'm just testing out the mic. I, I saw last time it was I got a bit too hot, so you got to <laughs> you know, keep me under control. No. Never too hot. Open it up, mate. Open it up. It's all good. <laughs> oh, yeah. Angry. Get excited. Look out. Why not? The I do have a question though, Taylor Nate. McEwen you know, Euro pool party. Mm. Get it started. <laughs> <laughs> I do have a question, Nate, for the golden yeah. race. Was yeah. there no women's race? There was a women's race, but they okay. didn't show either one of these races. And uh, I, I can't see the like, women's race. It, I'll 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 send it to you because okay. it is on the internet. But was it weird? Uh, yeah, they were both weird because I don't think they were using the right splits. Like the men's, they were just going off. People were trying to like calculate everything, the difference between the times, and it yeah. just didn't seem like it was right. Plus, it's some people pulled out. I don't think there was any money on the line. That's why this shit was so, so fake. Mm, mm. You know, it it seemed just a bit awkward for them. I saw the men's; it was just a bit awkward. I was expecting more. I, I think it like not. It's not a bad idea. You know, like everyone's trying to do something different. You know, yeah, put some money on the line crowns and all sorts of stuff. So, but the, the story of the, the weekend is obviously killer McCune again. Kurt, take it away. Killer. Yeah. I reckon we got to start a new segment called make it make sense. And then we can cover some things in that. Because speak up, Kurt, things. speak up, get that, get that mic up on that face, mate. How about that? Is that, yeah. That's better. That better. All right. So I was just saying we should do it. Yeah, we should do a segment called Make It Make Sense. And I've got a list of things there. And I reckon the, the golden race is in the Make It Make Sense. But yeah, I think Aqua we'll get to that. Right underneath Aqua Points. <laughs> at, least when, at, least, at least when they added the Aqua Points up, whatever they are made up of, like it generally looked like it was pretty accurate. You know, like <laughs> at least they gave yeah. the award to Kaylee McCune and Chin Hai Yang. So yeah. But anyway, yeah, they so won it by a mile. Two world records, pretty big weekend. <sighs> yeah, huge. So what one she takes one point two off in the fifty. Um uh, takes down China's Lu Wang's world world mark set in twenty eighteen. Hundred back, backs up. So two world records in two days. Lowers her own mark. What fifty seven three three, another point two off her own mark, which she set a couple of years back. Does the triple triple sweep, which we all thought she would do. Fifty one two back. Berlin, Athens, Budapest. Um, mix that with the World Champs triple that she did in Fukuoka. Um, she's going to win World Swimmer of the Year. There's no doubt about that. Uh, first woman's backstroker in history to have the 51-200 world record. No, Egazeki had the 100 and the 200 for a couple of years there. Obviously, there was no the 50 world record didn't come in until 97. So right. she's what more yeah. could she have really? What more could you have really done this calendar year? Like, it's just been... Well, what, more, what more can you do? Like, she is not tapered. She's traveling the world, like, going to swim meets. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's October. Yeah, I, like, how, how, like, what is the next level? If she was shaped and tapered, is she going faster? Well, Hawk, you tell me, Meg, you tell me, what sessions is she doing with Michael Bowl? Like, what... Can she produce? I love like they're not gonna. Bolly's not gonna tell you, but she must be doing some crazy stuff, no? Yeah, I asked. I asked Bolly straight up. Um, I said, you know, like the what's? How can she go from a fifty? <laughs> how can she go from the fifty up to the two hundred? Like it's such two like three different events really, and I and I just find that she's got the speed, yet she's got in, like you know in endurance or middle middle distance endurance like you know one goes for 20 what 27 seconds and and the other one goes for 203 and it's 
it's pretty special. And Bowley uh, didn't elaborate at, at all, so he didn't say anything to me. Mm. Um, but he did say that she's been working on her turns. Um, her free swim time is absolutely um, is up there, but she's really been um, disciplined and consistent with working her turns underwater and her starts. So I feel for me like the thing that stood out in that 100 backstroke world record was her turn um, and her back end speed. She split. 28 1 29 1 like she 29 1 in a second 50 of 100 backstroke like well for a one second difference in 100 backstroke is you know mind-blowing so um she's definitely got speed but she can hold on to it as well through that fatigue um i was actually pretty surprised she went that fast in the 200 she went 206 in the in athens so um, you know, 204 is, is so solid still. Um, she went out a little bit slow, I think, um, for that 200 backstroke, but um, she had a big meet, so two world records. I was going for three from three, like give her 100%. Um, but she, yeah, so I, I don't think, I don't know, if, I don't even know if there's a secret to her training. I think she's just like, got a killer instinct and she's consistent all the way through and she's working on those um, you know, that technique and the underwaters and her start, like the little things in there as well. So she's just an all-round athlete. She's um, lean. She's, you know, working on her technique, working on her skills. But also she's just got that mindset. She just gets up and races. So um, I do think she knows I messaged her during the week and now she knows that she's got a big target on her back come Paris. Um, but I think she what? loves it. What? Yeah, I think she loves it. Oh, she just realised that now? Like yeah, that just I hit her? Oh, <laughs> oh shit, shit, now I've got a big target on Now I've got all Paris. three. What the I'm, hell I are you be, talking about? I must be a favourite. Um, <laughs> wow. I think, yeah, but I think she quite likes pressure. I don't know. It's it's hard. I I, I think it's hard going into an Olympic year being – she's going to have a lot of pressure if, if those world records stay. Like all the world records, obviously the 50 back is not in there, but – it is like she's got so much um, momentum and to keep going all the way through to August next year. Um, but I, I, I mean, I still think she's the best in the world, obviously. And I think she's she loves pressure and, and I think she can absolutely step up and, and claim the 100, 200 again in, in Paris. So what, what, what girls can even beat her? What, what girls are under 58 right now? R Reagan Smith and that's it? Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. And that's all mental, I feel. Th for this girl's Reagan. looking for 56, you know? <laughs> and I, I, oh. the scary thing is I think she might get it. I think she honestly might get it, you know, like whether it's Paris or not, it, it's she's going to go 56, I think. I think she's absolutely – she's got the belief now. She's got speed. She's only getting, she's only getting better, which is scary, scary. So – but still, when you look at the stat, like Reg isn't that far off her at her best, is she? Yeah. But it's just a matter of do you get the feel like and to see what she's doing at the moment, um, that focus, you get the feeling is starting to shift to a 200 fly. That's it. That's looks like her main goal. When you've got someone like Kaylee in the form she's in, it's not like she's going to, she can't dodge her. She's going to have to race at least one of those backstroke events. But you get yeah. the feeling that movement has gone a little bit to the, to the 200 fly for her. But I've got a few questions for Kaylee. Number one, does she go to Doha next year and there's like 20 grand a, 20 grand a hit? You do the triple, there's 60 grand. You can just go, doink. Mm. Yeah, what what did she just win her. overall? What did she get overall? Like 200 grand out of this? Yeah, US yeah, well, too. Well, so like over 380,000 Australian. Yeah. It's so nearly she's... 400 grand. I, I just don't think the money year. for her is worth it rather than Olympic gold. I don't know, like ask any kind of swimmer olympic gold money money is good right but i think for her maybe olympic gold is dangling kind of up a little bit higher than you know 60 grand but yeah i don't think i don't think she'd go there for the money i think she'd go if it yeah. suited her race strategy and her race plan if she needed more racing if she yeah. feels like oh, i did this series to get my racing in so that then I can go back and do a block of work before trials. Maybe, maybe I think that's kind of where Bowley's head is usually at. Like, okay, let's get this in yeah. now and then let's go back and train. I would, I would lean more towards that than anything. Yeah. I, I'd, I'd be surprised if she did go to Doha, but she's a surprising kind of gal. 
200 <laughs> IM. Does, does any of this change putting 200 IM into the program for, for Paris? Obviously, we saw it get DQ'd at the World Champs. Yeah, I think she should do it. I think it's it's a nice little distraction from backstroke. Like, I don't know about you guys, but I enjoyed training up something other than your main stroke. I think it's quite important sometimes, especially for 200s, to have, you know, if, if your backstroke's off or, or anything like that, you've got a couple of other strokes to get through and not just waste a session. So I think, I mean, she's still, she's still world class as well, so she, it might be a little bit harder in that event, but... I say absolutely go for it. Well, she doesn't want to do the 400 not off next year. <laughs> Let's hope she's not having a back. Like, oh, wow, shit, my backstroke's off. I might just swim <laughs> the 2 IM instead. <laughs> it's really off. Yeah, it's really off. No, nah, I off. say 200 IM. Uh, she'll do She'll do 100, 200 back and 200 IM, I reckon. Mm. Okay. Might even then try for the 4 by 2 freestyle. Mm. When you look at what... Um, Christina Egazeki's achieved in her career um, as a backstroker and people are very quick to forget, obviously, triple Olympic champ in the 200, 88, 92, um, 96. What one did the one, two double in 88, I think from memory. She, won, she ended up winning the 400 IM in 96 as well. Mm. And then that record in the 200 backstroke, which is the world record holder for something like 17 years, yeah. 91, and then took what Coventry in a floaty suit in 2008 to break it. It's pretty crazy. What does Kaylee have to achieve to supersede Egazeki as the greatest female backstroker we've ever seen in the history of the sport? Oh, I think I think Olympic gold, obviously, again. Like if I she think can she go... has to do it with uh, hairy armpits, just like Egazeki. <laughs> <laughs> I think if she if she wins next year and she decides not to shave under her arms, I think she goes and she becomes... Le she goes the legendary one. status. <laughs> <laughs> legendary. She goes and up both on... arms up. Claiming, like, yeah, just claim it, and she yeah. got full head, not even armpits. shaved. Yeah, I think she's just got that pistol, awesome. that pistol picture, and then mm -hmm. yeah. Bang. in a headlock, and she drops a double F bomb. <laughs> she <laughs> dropped one last time. This one, she has to drop double. Yeah, yeah. but I think she what? knows, like, I think she knows that records are obviously there to be broken, right? They are, they're, they're going to be broken, but no one can take away, you know, Olympic gold medals. So I, I think she has to go 100, 200 double and she'll be, if not even. Um, but people, people are so quick to forget history, right, unless you're a real swimming nut. But um, people, you know, different generations are always going to go, oh, who? Like, yeah, that's just in history. So people now might not know or might not have seen Egazeki swim, so they don't know who she is. It becomes relevant, yeah. irrelevant. I, I tried to get you know, her on like, the podcast. Absolutely. No, I did. Yeah. I, reached amazing. Out. I reached out. Oh, oh you amazing. tried? Yeah, I got nothing. Really? Uh, that would be cool. Well, She'd be a really interesting yeah. person. Try again, Brett. Try again. Yep. Try again. Try again. Okay. Well, it took, yeah. it took four years to get Peter Van der Hoogham on. So. Mm. Oh, what mm, a cool point. name to say. But, yeah, I think she's going to go one, two, double. I think she's going to go double again, and she's on that level. If not, um, I don't know what more. I don't know what more she can do after that. After that, I, what more do you do? Well, you know how many Australians in history have won back-to-back -back individual doubles? Tell us. We love their stats. Zero. Zero. <laughs> not Dawn, not Thorpey, not Hacky, not That's Perkins, crazy. not Rose, not yeah. Peter Thiel. So she'd be the only swimmer Pop in history. What about Popov? Popov was living in Australia Victoria. when he went back-to-back. -back. <laughs> <laughs> The other Smoking interesting thing cigars. is not just obviously Arnie gets a shot at it as well in the two and yeah, four. Yeah, Arnie and does. Yep. At, so does Emma McKeon. And, and him gets a shot at yeah, fifty and one. Um, yeah. And you think at the moment Kaylee's in the box seat to do it. Arnie, you wouldn't back against her. She's a big chance. It's, it's tough for her though. And M's facing you know a real tough challenge. Um, also, but to, to have th three women on the cusp of immortality cool. in Australia is pretty uh, yeah, it's pretty awesome. That's I think that just shows it shows you like. The state of Australian women swimming right now, right? Three women Spassy. have the opportunity to go back to back Olympics at the next Olympics. That's pretty crazy. This last cycle has been pretty much all Australia on the women's side of things. Well, let's just talk about the state of very briefly, if we can, otherwise we'll go down the rabbit hole. The state of, um, you know, swimming Australia full stop and at an organizational level. At a board level, um, 
it, I don't think it's ever been worse. And, you know, we saw that um, this week where they almost got booted from World Aquatics. Uh, they that's left just the, a bunch of boring 11th hour BS crap. <laughs> to get their act together, like for it to come to that. But, yeah. And people come to obviously they know I'm involved in swimming. They love it. They ask me, like, oh, the sport's in trouble, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, bah, 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 bah. back up. The best it's ever been. High performance, best it's ever been. So what a bizarre yeah. world we're living in here at the moment in Australia where the organization is the worst it's ever been, but the high performance part of it is the best it's ever been. Um, it's a really, yeah. yeah, it's a really odd mix. And the first thing that comes to mind is that they don't, the high performance people don't need don't need that side of it yeah you know what i mean like it's running it's running its own race um and now that what 21 board members is it now and the world aquatics has got to have someone on there and the whole thing is a real so what's the real re- what's the real rub what why is it in such chaos well these, these people just are volunteers and they can't get along in the direction of where they want to go it's like when you're the best team in the whole world you'd think everything would be going like Swimmingly, <laughs> good dad well, joke. Start. It's leadership. Comes down to leadership, doesn't it? Yeah. And, and what? What are you? And funding through? as yeah, well. Well, they've gone through what four, four plus CEOs in as many cycles. Like yes. it's crazy how. So they're leaderless at the moment. Still don't have. Uh, you know, they have an interim CEO at the moment trying to get things back on. But um, it's very. Well, and then I, the states are like having. Um, the states aren't. Wide as well, and especially Queensland, who is that's where Gina's you know gone to, and what swimming Queensland is doing, they're doing it on their own. Look at Queensland as a state. Look at the amount of swimmers they've got. Look at the amount of programs they've got. Um, look at their like their, their whole structure. What they're doing is putting you know swimming Australia to shame right now. And I don't even know if they're talking. Yeah, I couldn't give you an honest answer. Cor, how long are you down there for? Between. Swimming Queensland and Swimming Australia. Um, here for three weeks almost. All right, do some sniffing around, mate. Get get your little uh, <laughs> get in there. Get in there and just get a little get sniff your around, you know. Let's just have Gina on. Get- <laughs> Big D. But she does oh. she does sponsor them directly through Swimming Queensland. So that tells you a little bit about that she's working directly with Swimming Queensland and not Swimming Australia because she wants those funds to go directly to the athletes. So that tells you a little bit about the background as well about Swimming Australia. Um, but you're right, Kurt, like I think leadership has a big thing to do with it um, and, and where the sport's going. So well, it's, interesting it's not just about you, now. Like it's not you, just about now. If you have a bad GM as, as an NFL team or an NBA team or a baseball team, you're going to suck. Yeah. Okay. But if you have a bad GM and bad board members of a national governing body for swimming, doesn't matter. You can still mm. be the best swimming country in the world, which I guess is well, kind of we, we kinda are good. <laughs> yeah, you know. Yeah, and yeah. make sure right, like you've got Gina like putting the money through Queensland Swimming to go to all the swimmers, and it's not just the money that they've got. Hi, it's the trust. Yeah. Gina trusts Swimming Queensland. She doesn't trust Swimming Australia off the back of their track record, and that's yeah. what they were. The, you know. the athletes were getting payments late or something. And so, Gina, that's this is why Gina made this big hubbub. Is that that's why? She yeah, I think there's a. I think, they, yeah, I think there's a bit more to it. I think there was a little bit more to it, but I don't know. Let's the just facts, get her on. So. You know, <laughs> let's get her on. Right, get us, uh, get us a podcast with Gina, mate. Come yeah. on, line that up. <laughs> I think she dropped some bombshells. To be fair. Oh, good. But oh, from yeah, our like want, from our perspective, from from a swimming fans' perspective, from yeah. a competitive swimming enthusiast um the high performance unit is it, it's fine and yeah it's a, and they've gone through their own issues as well with reviews as well and into bullying yeah. and all those kind of things and and that's not isolated just to swimming that's isolated to every sport and that every sport's had to make changes in how they yeah. how they run things and i'm sure if you asked any member of that dolphins team especially in the last what 12 to 18 months it's the team you want to be a part of yeah, um, it's getting and, better and better. And you can't get those results in the pool, like we've seen in, in London in 2012. If the if the vibe's bad out of the pool, it's so much harder to get the results in the pool. It's toxic, and, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's just filtered through. So they're getting the results out of the pool um, and they're getting the results in it. 
All right, let's go back to the World Cup, round this thing up. What else, who else we got on the World Cup circuit? Well, Purple Dragon, you know, and I feel for Purple Dragon as well, Chin Hai Young. Um, I, I feel for him in that he just, Kaylee just overshadows him and what he's produced this year as well. Um, you know, he, he's almost done a carbon copy of what Kaylee did 51 2 at the World Champs, broke the world record in the two, took uh, Stubbledy Cook's time down, um, and then goes on the World Cup tour and, you know, cuts sick as Dominates. well. Um, gets the triple triple. Um, my biggest question for him is like, can he keep his money? Are you going to see a cent of it? <laughs> oh, look. I hope so. When you're a Chinese athlete like that, man, you, they get paid. You're yeah, a superstar. Mate. It's big mm. time, mm. you know? So I'm not, I'm not worried about him keeping his money. He's getting papered. He's going to get, he's, he's going to get taken care of over there. Um, do you think he breaks Petey's world records? In the hundred or the fifty between now and Paris or at Paris. It's interesting because he he's, he's close to the fifty. 50. I know that. Yeah, he's yeah. close to the fifty than the hundred. Yeah. Well, he's not doing that in Paris because there is no fifty. So here's here's yeah, the same. thing with the fifties. We're seeing this this fifty, hundred, two hundred sweep from from these off events where they don't have a, a designated Olympic gold. Are these fifties soft? That's the question I'm asking here. Is Kayla McEwen's 50 backstroke record? Is that a soft world record? Is, uh, is, uh, Quinn chin, animal chin, uh, purple dragon. Is he, uh, <laughs> is he a soft record too? Is this 50 breaststroke a soft record? Are we going to see, um, specialists in the future? Once we start handing out Olympic gold, and then all of a sudden, these world records in the 50s of stroke become monster records. Yeah, I'd yeah. say all the 50 form strokes a week. Like I said, we're, like, we've only had world records since 97. Then before then, we had world bests. So you'd think, surely, that's where the biggest impact's going to come in the next, you know, next decade. Yeah. I think the answer is yes, right? Like, how many athletes that are old are retiring because there isn't a 50 fly? There's lots of them. You know, Santos is a great example. He's like 40. Like if, if you make it an Olympic event, people will be able, be able to continue their careers for many, many, many more years, like a couple of cycles, in fact, and still be able to do it. Shit, Michael Andrew, man, he, 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 could, be, he could be pushing 50 years old and, and still make an Olympic team in a 50. <laughs> I'm saying it's, 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 it's potentially possible. Especially with those ketones he's drinking, whatever he's doing. When, uh -oh, like, uh -oh, here comes joking. Mr. Ketone right here. Go ahead. <laughs> Ketone oh, Kurt. Uh, Ketone someone asked me if I was drunk. I don't actually drink, so that's like, what a great compliment. Am I drunk? Yeah, right? It's 1.30 one, one one in the morning. Give him a shot. Yeah. He's just been out. <laughs> it's just, yeah, he's been out with the kangaroos. Raven. Um, yeah, the, the, the fifth, what are we joke about it. What do the 50s have to do to get in the Olympics now? Like the Olympics are desperate to get eyeballs and we've seen it. Like for LA, cricket is in, um, flag, flag football. football is in. Like, yeah, dude, yeah, it's we can't get the we can't get I'm, six more fifties in there. Like, I'm like done even talking about it, you know, because it's just yeah, no one has any influence. World Aquatics begged for it for years. They would IOC wouldn't put it in. USA Swimming begged for it. All these people were everyone wants it, and they're just like, nope, there's too many medals. Which is true. Like swimming's crazy ridiculous. It is tough a lot. You know all who these we're gonna have on the podcast. We're gonna have we're gonna have Anthony Irvin. Anthony, we need you, buddy. Come on the mm. podcast. Tell us why we don't have fifties of strokes, mate. Like we yeah. need an answer from World Aquatics Absolutely. from FINA. Like you're on you're in the inner circle now. Tell us why we can't get it, mate. Come on. Yeah. And Boom, man, love got, it. Yeah, and we got lacrosse. Come on, man. Make it make sense. Is that another American <laughs> sport we invented? Yeah, you guys invented some weird stuff. To become world champions at? Anyways, okay, we digress. How did Christoph Milak look this weekend? <laughs> he Not looked good. like he hadn't been back in the pool. Yeah. Right. Yeah, unfortunately. Yeah. Who knows with that guy? He could rock. You'd, you'd not see him, and he could rock up on the day of the Olympics. And... But he said he was racing, right? He said he was racing in Budapest. Yes. And then he's like, no, I'm not doing it. Correct. So that sucks. It, yeah. It, it here's suck. one for you. Best male swimmer of the year. Purple Dragon, Chin Hai Young, or Leon? Oh, that's a hard one. Mm. Hard. It depends, like, what you go off. I, I feel like... Super Dragon or Purple Dragon has done a lot more racing 
So he's going to get a little bit more. Although, you know, like Leon depends if you count um, short, short course yards. Um, depends if you count that. They're always going to give him the nod. He broke the world record. Did yeah, Michael but, Phelps? Did Michael Phelps um, commentate the the fifty hundred two hundred breaststroke? Didn't think so. <laughs> no, no. He was he was there for the four AM. I suppose yeah. it is the long. It was the longest. You know, world record still still there. So you have to give him that. But I don't know. I think I, Quinn is. I've been probably a little bit more. You know, racing fit. I think. He's been probably more in the spotlight a little bit because he's done so many more races. He did Asian Games. He's done World Cups. Um, but you could argue that Marshawn has done. Leon's breaking you know, world records, short course yards, left and right. Yeah. He's, he's getting all those short course yards, world records. Those world records? You cannot yeah. say they're, they're world, world records. records. Yeah. They are so not. You can't say world records yeah, because world it's records. not. It's yeah. ridiculous, short course yard, world records. Please. Mm. Yeah, he's getting them all. <sighs> short course yards. Sorry, Nate. <laughs> it's an interesting, it's an interesting one, but yeah, for for Dragon, what a what a year, what a calendar year as well. I think and, you could argue it, yeah, with with who who is the swimmer of the year. So, and what about Peeny? Just how close can he get? I, I think that's seen? like a great question. Instead of just all chin high yang, because yeah, and Adam Peaty, does he have enough time to to get back into form? His fifty's not that bad. Twenty six seven yeah. or something. That's pretty damn good for taking six months off. Well, the PD, the the PD on you was dominating the world, and every time he would crush a field, he'd get like a, a new lion tattooed on his arm, or he'd get like a, you know, a samurai or something. He he was he was a murderer, and now he's taking pictures with his competition, like uh, his best buddies. It's just I like saw his, that. You know, yeah. Like, I don't know what's happening. Like, who's where the murderer? Into go? the light. He was, he was smashing people left and right. He was like this dominant, you know, lion figure who sits yeah. on top of the mountain. That was his whole persona. And now his whole persona is, hey, I'm best friends with this dude who's whipping my butt, you know? I don't know. Just, it's just it's Do you think weird. that is because he's getting beaten? So he's trying to act like, you know, quite nice because he's getting beaten. He doesn't want to be like a suki lala. I, I I don't know what's happening, you know. Like I, I guess it's a decent approach to go that route instead of being a little sportsmanship you know, baby about it. Yeah, like he's yeah. Like, okay, I'm getting beat right now. Maybe that's the thing. But like you know, just I just remember for the years he was just like this figure of like I'm the dominant man on the pool deck. This is my pool deck. I'm the king of the castle. And now it's like that dude's better than me, and I'm going to take a photo with him. It's just yeah, different, you know. He went yeah. from hunter to hunted. Yeah. And once that happens, sometimes it's there's like he's won two Olympics. He redid breaststroke the entire stroke. He yeah. changed everyone's opinions on how fast you could swim the 1500 breaststroke. Like, what else is there? Right. Mm. And and that's why the people that are hunting are the scariest people because they the have those killers in them. It's hard yeah. to remain the killer. Right. It's hard to be a Michael Jordan or a Tom Brady or a Michael Phelps. Yeah, I don't know. No, it's just a different approach to what they were seeing. So it's interesting. Um, I think it'll be, yeah, I think it'll be hard to beat Quinn. I think he's just got so much confidence and he's got momentum and he knows that he's really good and he's hungry, hasn't won Olympic gold. Oh. Um, he wants it. You know, like, like Nate said, it's, you know, he's been – hunting him and, and he really wants it so that's hard to beat you can't really train that so much it's just in you um so I, he looks scary for next year for Petey. Mate, can we get a picture of uh world swimmer of the year according to meg's up can we get that picture up that, that meg's you know she she's claiming this guy's <laughs> this is... world swimmer of the year i'm not exactly <laughs> yes. sure why we'll have, we'll have to, uh, oh have my to god tell picture. you tell me why see, not. One second. you tell me why not We'll go to the picture, see who World Swimmer, World Swimmer of the Year, according to Megs, is. Let's have a Absolutely. look. Absolutely. Oh, there he is. Oh, hey. there he is. Oh, he not oh, even okay. shaved Interesting. down. Interesting. And this is his This is his Instagram, <laughs> by the way. This isn't Megs. Uh, <laughs> that's not mine. Private collection. <laughs> All right. Interesting. Um, yeah, he, that's my Swimmer of the Year. <laughs> one thing that I brought up in the group chat was like uh, I, I got interviewed by the some Italian swimming magazine over the weekend and and they were asking, like, how many medals do you think that they could win? And I was like, not that many. Like, other than Chacon, like, who who's there? Who's in the mix anymore? Like, the relays aren't that great. The women's team is really kind of, 
I don't want to say falling off a cliff, but there's just, there's no superstar. There's no more Federica Pellegrini there. Yeah. You know, other yeah, than. Four by one had a mayor, didn't they? And they missed, yes. the, they missed the final at Worlds and they were, they were just it, gibbering. And they still, they, you know, they there's still people there. Paul Trenari is still there, albeit he's swimming in probably the most competitive event in men's swimming right now with all these guys sniffing the world record in the mile. Um, I, he, he's got a great chance in the 10 K they have a good chance to medal on the four by 100 freestyle relay. But this is the guy, this is the Italian superstar. This is the best backstroker in the world right now. He went 52, three times in a row this month, which one is uh, obviously, it? can you pull him up again? I can't remember what he looks like. Obviously oh, guy, not shaved. Guy. Oh, that guy. He's got a very long torso. We got a long torso. Yeah, longer than massive Michael crown. Andrew, that's How many something. crowns did they hand out over the weekend? By the way, there was just everybody. Here's a crown. It was like Oprah Winfrey Go show. Here's a crown. Here's a, a crown. crown. Everybody get a crown. Hungry Jack's crowns. Well, he got the hundred free and he got the hundred back. That's a good double. Yeah. yeah. Do you think he'll go hundred free for next year as well? Yeah. Hundred back, hundred free. Mm. I think he might do the two hundred backstroke. Yeah, I, I think yeah. he should. Honestly, I think he is. Pretty mad not to do that two in a backstroke. He's he just went one fifty six a, a couple of times. I think he went one fifty seven zero or something a third time. Yeah, one fifty six. Excuse me, in the middle of training. Yeah, the guy who wins the world record in the hundred. There's that. It's probably arguably the weakest men's backstroke event. No one's even been close to the world record. Reloff <laughs> is definitely not invited to Paris, so the Olympic champ ain't going to be there. This this guy's got a great chance to yeah. to if he wants to, he could definitely win Italian nationals, get qualified for the Olympics. Maybe he won't win, but he's gonna be in the hunt for that for the podium, you know. For him to pass up the two hundred, I, I just I doubt that he does that. There's just I'd a like see medal right in front of his eyes. Absolutely like to see that. Great swim from uh, Thomas Shackon. The uh, damage down that first 50. <laughs> <laughs> He's a character. Yeah, he is Another a character. one uh, I like to see, though, is Sammy Short, obviously world champ in the 400 freestyle. He was back. He just came over to do the, the Budapest leg for the World Cup. Went 344, went 147 in the 200. So um, I did send a message and asked him why he was only doing the one World Cup and why didn't he do three because it feel like it was a long way from Australia to do one. Um, and he said he didn't want to drop the volume um, to do three weekends in a row. And he just wanted to do one to see where he was as a hit out for the opener of the season. And he drops a 344 for his first one. Um, he is one that is hunting and he is hungry for more. Um, he's got a really, yeah, really good chance. Obviously um, he's got a, a few competitions, uh, competitors in that, in that comp for the 400. So it was good to see him, though. It was good to see him get, you know, travel halfway across the world and drop a 344 or 147. So good to see Semi Short back. That he was, was just uh, as surprised as you. Yeah. What he said <laughs> afterwards. He was like, damn, I can't believe I swam that fast in the middle of this. Yeah. He's a racer, too. You know, he can just get up and race, which I really like. He just mm. wants it. He, he like, actually likes pain. <laughs> yeah. He was yeah, saying on the, have a celebrity visit. He was saying on the, on the podcast how he's – He's just increased his blocks. Like he, instead of doing hundreds and two hundreds on repeat at race pace, he's doing up to five hundreds. Yeah, know, he's just definitely clearly a guy that thrives on that stuff. Yeah, he's gonna be scary next year. Yeah, yeah. Damian Jones has got him pumping, and they've, and they've got a great relationship, and they're just going strength to strength. Um, All right, one four of triple crowns with like Siobhan one and two hundred triple crown, um, Sates two hundred medley, two hundred fly. Um, Zhang Yufei mm. was. She was brilliant, wasn't she? 100, 200 fly. Um, obviously, Sarah, 50 fly, 53. Um, Lani did well, got the distance, triple crown. Erica Fairweather, New Zealander, she got the 400. It's good to see her. And obviously, Michael Andrew got the 50 back. Yeah, I mean, 50 back doesn't mean anything. I mean, he, he wants some money, but tough. it's like, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Again, I'm, I'm still perplexed as to what Michael Andrew is trying to achieve. Now I'm, I'm, now I'm perplexed because, like, I mean, he, he, he swam some hundreds for sure, right? Like he swam 100 flies and, and 100 back. He just, 
Not yeah, you just seem to have Aussie. big success in the 50s of stroke. Yeah. Uh, and again, it just doesn't seem like that should be really an emphasis right now in the Olympic year. I mean, it's, it's nice to take some cash and he's saying that he won the triple crown and the 50 back, but like, who cares really? Like it's just the Olympic year. My, my mindset would be different in terms of that. But again, I just don't know where he's at and what he, what he's focused on. Um, yeah. It's just so, slightly odd. Couldn't agree more. Yeah. Well, and I think see, um, you go, sorry. yeah, you go Kurt. No, I was just saying, you see what some of the swimmers got out of it. You see what Sarah got out of it. Like she did the triple crown in the 50s, but still produced some beautiful 100 freeze, 100 flies as well, and got a huge boost out of it, didn't she? Mm. Mm. Yeah. Michael Andrew just needs to figure out what he's doing. Cam McAvoy is focusing on the 50 freestyle, and that is it. This dude's swimming everything again. He's swimming, trying to train all four strokes. Are you going to be the American record holder and the guy that leads Team America on the breaststroke leg of the medley relay again? Or are you going to try to swim the 50 backstroke? Mm. It's yeah. a, his focus is not there on something. It's on everything, and that's the biggest problem. You know who Absolutely. I'm excited about? I'm excited about Matt Sates. Yeah, I was just about to talk about him. Go ahead. I like this guy. I think I think he had the hardest double. I think he did the dirty double at every World Cup, the 200 IM, the 200 fly. To do that um is is pretty he's a he's a good guy and I'm I, I was a bit disappointed not to see him at Worlds. Um so I I think trying to see what he's going to be like at a big stage um under pressure. It just happens to be the Olympics next year whether he does um Doha or not at the world um we saw him at the world we've seen him at world cups before so um you know he did the triple crown and what did he get i think he got third in the overall um men's for the world for the world cups so he is exciting he did you know won a couple of 400 ims as well but that 200 im and the 200 fly so um obviously Marshawn is pretty dominant in those but um, he's he's starting to get that consistency. He's starting to get that hunger again. So he's and he's in form, which is exciting. And I think he's tough. You know, he is tough. He, I think he fractured his wrist. Did someone say or his finger or something? Yeah, and he kept swimming one. at the World Cups. Yeah. So you know, he's tough. And and I, Brett, you were at some of those um, South African, you know, um, fifty meter pools, and and they just don't have the funding like some of the other countries do. So he's, you know, he's tough. He's a talent, um, and he might not have the facilities that everyone else has, but he's still, he's still killing it. Well, that's yeah, what, that's him back. That's why mm. he's not going to Doha, right? They're, they're, South Africa is not spending money to send him there. <laughs> yeah, I would assume. I'm, I'm, yeah, I was just surprised that he didn't go to Worlds this year as well. And as no. Sonny says all the time, Rocco, they they are only focused on the Olympics. This guy's yeah. just out here whipping these events back and forth training his ass off. This is why he was so perfect for college swimming. He's that guy that can literally swim fast in any event that you need him to, and he'll come in there and he'll clean it up. And that's what he did that one year he was at Georgia, won the 500 freestyle in like something crazy, like 406. But he did it on the he, – he, he wins. That's the thing. The problem is, and the question I proposed was, can he finally mm -hmm. take the next step and swim fast in these events at taper meets, not World Cup meets, not – Short course yeah. yards meets. What does he? Um, what does he contend for gold in Paris? I think he'll go the two four hundred IM and two hundred fly. He should final in all three of those events. Yeah, yeah final finals are a different thing than contending for gold, though, isn't it? Yeah. Well, he just went one fifty five zero in the two hundred butterfly. Like after swimming for a IM. whole month running around, like can you go one fifty three zero? When you're mm. rested in mm. another eight months, because if you go 153 oh, you're going to get silver. You would have gotten silver last year mm. or bronze. Yeah, that's a medal. Yeah, on what he's shown this year, it's hard to get a read with no uh, world champs, but he's going to be on the podium yeah. or something. Surely. I think well, that's not, he's, not, he's not winning the 4 a.m. at this stage, and, and no, it doesn't look likely that he's getting second in it either at this stage. He's not. He's not yeah. pushing up on times that would suggest that he's going to get gold or silver in the four AM. Um, it doesn't seem like he's got the strength and speed to really contend for the gold or silver in the two AM, does it? 
So I think it's. Talking, yeah, I think I think Nate's right. I think we're talking about somebody that's very talented and very good, but I don't know if he is yet at that level where we're talking about him winning events or even finishing second at the Olympics. Yeah, I'd that. like to see him try and get like on the podium for next year, whether it's a, a bronze or a silver um, in whatever he gets. But I'd like to see him, and maybe that's the confidence he needs to then take that next step again. Um, but I'd like to see him. I'd like to see him up there next year. It's a cool dude. Yeah. I'll tell you who is going to be on the podium or pushing is Siobhan. And again, the um, World Cup that she's had, um, yeah. just that, you know, so close to that world record. Um, you think now the 100 and that she's going to challenge whatever two Aussies are going to be there right next to her. Um, obviously, if we had Sunny on here, it'd be screaming through the mic telling us all that <laughs> she can take him down it's a tough task um it's not out of her reach is it and she's a pleasure to watch no what is she the third or fourth fastest swimmer ever in history in the hundred yeah uh she just went 52 2 she's been 52 0 i i was predicting that at one of these stops she was going to get under uh mm. 52 and become i think there's only been three girls right three sarah, sarah sostrom Emma. Emma McKeon. And Kate? No. no. She hasn't been so under? She ever has, yeah. No. Yeah, I think there's only two. Yeah. Okay. That's a pretty cool elite club. But I think with Siobhan, she's had such a big um, probably last couple of months. You know, to go from Worlds to go to Asian Games and then three World Cups, that's a lot of racing. It's a lot of experience. And, and she's still producing times. So, um, you know, her mindset is really strong and I think she's taking that momentum as well, um, you know, off those three World Cups to still be able to swim fast. Um, I think she's definitely going to be there in that 100. I, I nearly put my hat on it. She'll be top first or, you know, top three for sure. I, I don't want to jinx anyone, but I think she, she'll definitely be there. Well, she's got a much year. easier path to get get there, right? Yeah. I mean, if she you're have the stress of trials, you know, there, there, you could be, you could be third or fourth or fifth at Australian <laughs> trials and still be fifty-two low. Yeah, I think that's the most oh. nerve-wracking thing is just making the team. Once you're on it, it's fine. You go and swim and you have a good time, but making that team trials is the most craziest experience. I think it's, it's obviously like US trials as well, um, but yeah, the, the trials are usually more. Nerve I think the, that the I think that hundred free for women right now is like you could be fifty two low, and you could either win the Olympics or you could finish fourth. Yeah, you know, like it's just like it's just stacked at that top end. You never know how it's going to play out. You know who's going to be on on the day. You know we're coming down to hundreds of seconds th type thing, and and there's four or five girls around that mark that can kind of get there, and it's going to be like, well, who who hits on the day? It could be Siobhan. Yeah. It could be Siobhan's day where she takes the gold, or she could be slightly off and 52-3, and she's fourth. You know what I mean? So it's like that to me is where the 100 freestyle for women is right now. I think that's going to be the race of, of the Olympics, I think, that on, women's on 100 freestyle. Sides. Yeah, I think, um, yeah, also the men's. But I think that's the, the depth in that is is pretty pretty amazing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah she had a great World Cup. 100 free is going to be a cracker at the Olympics, both men and women. There's just Ooh, so much yeah. so much depth. Um, and but I even think in the really lead up to the, tri the trial events are going to be pretty cool to watch, see who gets the hand on the wall. I was just I was just in Cal and um, spending time with like a guy like Jack Alexi, who looks really good, by the way. That, that, that kid um, – <laughs> is Working on really focused really focused right like i think he's the the next big american thing you know he, he even competes or or is even better than a dressel in the 100 free right now i don't know if he's got dressel in the 50 yet but his 100 free is like he, he could be the guy in america for he's only 20 years old he could be the man for the next six seven years if he wanted to be kind of thing so he he's really in and on and and he's just another name that you have to throw in the mix and that 100 free who could possibly win in Paris, right? Like there's just mm. there's probably mm. seven or eight guys now that you're throwing into that mix of like, well, who, whoever's on on the day in the 100 free is, is man, that's going to be a cracker. But I think even just making teams, you know, he's got to get on the team first, get that one-two spot. Um, yeah, it's going to be really interesting to see the trial events. We're talking a lot about the Olympics, but it's just who's going to qualify and what spot is going to be a lot of fun in the lead-up, you know?
Exactly. Are we getting looks- down to Indianapolis or what? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, dude, we got front row tickets on the deck. What are you talking about? Yeah, we're there. We're there. Right, we're there. We're, we're going to get a uh, sauce. We're going to do some media. We're going to host some shows. Yeah. Yeah. Is yeah. Alexi working on uh, those starts with his hands together and feet together? And Actually, you know, the funny thing is they did a they did a, a session where they were getting off the blocks and they had suits on, and he got up to do a 25 dive, and his hands split. And I was like, <laughs> oh, man, like, let's not do that. He's like, yeah, that's the last time that happens. I'm like, no, that's the second time it's happened. So it's like, <laughs> you, you got to stop doing that, man. You got to stop doing that, man. <laughs> yeah, he's got this hand split thing. It's, like, it's just like, oh no, don't make that part of your regular training. So, yeah, who else impressed so you while you were there, Brett? Because it's yeah. different when you're when you're watching on TV. It's just not the same when you're on a deck and you can watch these guys yeah. swimming up and down for two or three hours. Like it's very noticeable. Yeah, Dari Rose. Dari Rose is really impressive. Um, I don't know. You know, he's focused on trying to get to 49. That's where he wants to be. But he's, but he's training for the 200, and he's going to swim the 200. So I'm like, mm. yeah, I like I like the idea behind that. I just don't know if that puts you in a position to be the fastest 100 butterfly in the world next year. You know, like I think it makes mm. him competitive for sure. He's 50.4, right? Like – but if you're training for the 200, does that really shift your focus away from being the number one guy in the hundred? That's all I'm saying. So like he's he's there and he's got a lot, he's a lot of talent, a lot of good things. I still don't think he's like as maybe as strong as he possibly could be for that hundred fly. I think he's got some things to clean up that are little detail work that maybe if you're training for the 200, you might slip on a little bit of those really specific details. I know he was. He was working on his turns while I was there and, and I put something up on Instagram and he's, he's got a little a couple of little things to clean up, but, but now he, he's a talent and he can really hold water. Um, and I love where he's at. Uh, and I, and I do think he's still going to contend next year. It'll just be interesting to see how it all comes together for him, but he's in a good spot. Um, I'll see like a physical stature type of a character. Yeah, he's big. He's big. Again, I think like he's, He's not super like buff, strong, kind of like he doesn't look like a hundred butterfly just yet. He looks kind of like that guy that could swim a, a good 200. And, you know, he's, he's, I just think if uh, with age, maybe with age and, and he decides to bulk up a little bit and maybe focus more on, with age, maybe, maybe by LA, maybe by LA, he's the guy that's like no one can touch in the hundred fly. You know, I just think right now he's just, young he's still figuring out he's still figuring out whether he wants to swim the, a really good two fly and so that they're still in that process of, of doing all that um so maybe it's just a it's, it's just an odd position for him to be in right now where the, the olympics is so close maybe la is his thing where he's like a full-grown man and he's put on strength and he's just like man this guy's swimming like 49 flat by then i don't know you know but he's 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 definitely a talent you know the other one um the other one who was impressive to me, just physically, I didn't know he was this kind of big, was, was Destin Lasko. Destin, Destin's a pretty big dude, solid. Like, you got solid legs, solid shoulders. Like, he looks stronger than I thought he was. And I was talking to Murphy about him, and Murph was like, this guy can just train. He's like, he he can beat me, you know, seven out of ten times in practice. Like, he he's, he's like, Murph, Murph was like saying, he gets me. You know, like he's good. And I said, well, is he going to get you next year in the two back? He's like, he could. He's like, there's no, there's no reason why he couldn't. Murph, Murph's a competitor, but you know, Murph, Murph's like, well, he's got to beat me on the day. But he's like, he, he gets me in practice. So Destin Lasko is definitely one that I'd keep an eye on. He's super talented, and he, and he's a big boy, and he's training hard. So that was interesting. Um, yeah. So Fun there, program. There was, Looks mm, like a great program yeah. to be part of. Yeah. Crazy yeah. talented program. Yeah, stacked across the board with a lot of a lot of good men walking around that pool deck. The women uh, are getting better, um, certainly with some of the recruiting they got coming in in the next few years. But um, the men, the men's side was definitely stacked with talent all across the board. Everywhere you look, big big men like six foot four, six foot five men walking around the pool deck. Um, yeah, a lot of a lot of really good talent. Pretty focused on getting better every day. So good good amount of focus so yeah that cal program has really got it clicking on, on especially on the men's side right now beautiful yeah it's a good good content there i like it yeah yeah i'll wrap up my cal content in the next day or so and then i uh, move on and get on to the next thing you know 
That's what we I like go it. Off World Cup. Is there anyone anyone else that we kind of missed that you? I just thought like, do we do we give Yafe enough credit for what she can do and the no, we don't had as well. And she is just the smiling assassin and just <laughs> she um, is. she she she's just so honest and upfront. I, I hate to try and fly and then crushes it. Um, and if. And she's there, and her and Sarah got this cool little battle as well in that hundred fly that um, they to and fro. And you think that's going to um, go forward to to Paris as well? But she's, um, you know, she's great for the sport, isn't she? Yeah, she's she's a character, and I kind of like when she does some interviews because she just rings. It's just like a little bit refreshing, you know. Like you don't really know what she's going to come out with, and she's just a personality which swimming kind of needs. But she. You know, she swims fast as well. Um, and there was, she's getting better, I think, at her, you know, her starts and her underwaters as well. I think she's, um, you know, she's not quite up where Sarah Sarah is, but she's getting better and better. Um, but, yeah, I, I think she's she's a, a good one to watch out for that 100, 200 double as well um, for next year. I think she, yes, yeah, she's a smiling assassin. Um, and I really like her. I th- I'd, I'd, be, I'd be pretty happy to see her get double she yeah. deserves it <laughs> she's a killer dude did you she's see her in the two cutie. flights out like 27 2 or 27 1 or something <laughs> yeah lunatic I, I i like i clicked onto it and i was like this must be like almost over she was two or two body lengths in front of all the girls at the 50 that's gonna hurt but um yeah she's just uh she's got real raw speed uh each of those hundreds she's out like very very fast you know, just blisteringly fast. No one's going fifty six zero right now, other than her. I think yeah. Regan went fifty seven five yesterday. That's not even. It's not even in the game. So, and it, there's not a lot to her either. Like she doesn't have a ton no. of muscle mass. She's very girl next door kind of build. I kind of think her and Shaban have a lot of similarities. They both have very bubbly personalities, where they're both seen smiling all the time. You know, both of them swim the 100 and the 200. One's free, one's fly. And they both have chances to win. And yeah. Crazy front end speed. Like, it's same with Siobhan in that 200 free. Like, what was going on there? Like, the 50 and the 100. Like, she is just, whoa. And I think what I love about, sorry to just put your fate at one side, but that battle in the one and two with Siobhan and Molly is they swim the race both op- like opposites. So to see them yeah. come together is makes it even more tantalizing, doesn't it? I love this. I loved Siobhan just drops like a four. Would she drop a four oh six or a four oh five in the four hundred? Mm-hmm. Like, could you imagine Molly just coming out and dropping a four oh five? Like, what? <laughs> like she just decided to swim a, a four hundred free at that first World Cup. So I think that's um that's a pretty cool thing to have as well. well. I'm gonna be down in Australia with Kurt. Uh Kurt's gonna kind of- Bypass me, he's going to be out of there. But I'll be down in Australia. I'm going to do some clinics in Sydney, Brisbane, and um, Melbourne. So uh, Sweet. I'm, going to, I'm going to be popping into some programs, checking in on Dean Boxall and his programs, see what the see what yeah. they're up to. But um, seeing what Cam McAvoy's doing. So yeah, I'm going to I'm going to pop into a bunch of programs while I'm there. But yeah, serial killer, Foley's. Um, yeah, yep. you guys head to uh, klimswim.com. And uh, if you want tickets to those clinics, they're they're up on the Klim Swim website. Uh, you can come see us and come work with us. But yeah, doing a bunch of clinics down there would be pretty cool. Very cool. Yeah. Sounds good. All right, I nice gotta to go. go. All Later. right, All right oh, that's good. Good night, that's Kurt. It. Good night, Kurt. Get some sleep. Yeah. Night, make Kurt. it make sense, people. Make it make sense. I'll, uh, mm. That's we're doing it. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>